I feel like I look like I'm dead because I'm so healthy. <laughs> Energy! Woo, woo, woo! Next is a thin brush or toothpick. I mean, use what you have, right? Okay, so... <laughs> excited! Okay. <laughs> cool tip. <laughs> And my name is Becky and we are the Sora Girls and today we are here to do some very fun and exciting Disney themed DIYs mm -hmm. When we went to Orlando Playlist Live back earlier in spring We went to Disney World and we got some comments since we didn't DIY anything when we went to Disney Which is like not okay So we're here to solve that and we've also been getting comments about a certain special collab that you guys wanted to see So today we're gonna make that happen Jen! Hey! Hello! Hey. Guys, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. This is Jennifer from Generation DIY, and um, you're gonna help us make some Disney DIYs today. I sure am. And on your channel, we're gonna do some thrift flipping Disney themes. Yes, it's gonna be a fun time, so come check it out. We're doing some thrift flipping. We went to the thrift store, and we're making it Disney edition, so it'll be really fun and magical. So mm -hmm. okay. come check it out. Yeah, well, you do lots of DIYs and thrifting on your channel, yeah. like Sally stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time. If you guys like our content, you'll also like Jen. So you should yeah. subscribe too. We're also all Canadian. Oh, it's true. So support. Subscribe if you're Canadian. Subscribe yeah. if you're not Canadian. <laughs> subscribe if you're anywhere in the world. <laughs> so today we have three super simple, easy DIYs that you can make. If you're going to the park, you want to make some custom Disney stuff, or you just want to rep Disney because me. And so we have three DIYs. We're going to show you how to make one of them each. You want to start, Kelsey? I'll start. Okay, choose me. <laughs> All right, first up, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a DIY mouse ears satchel. You can use this to put in your phone or any small things because you don't wanna carry around a big bag when you're going to the parks or if you're just out in life. Keeping it low key, like what's it called when you're um, like not high maintenance? Not high maintenance, low maintenance, you know? So to make this, I picked up two D rings, some faux leather, as well as a belt from the thrift store. Start it with our paper template. We're going to have this link below for you. Our members here on YouTube get our templates for free, so feel free to click the join button below to learn more about that. Start by cutting the paper template out, the main piece as well as the little rectangle. Trace both paper cutouts onto the faux leather, two of the main pieces with the ears, two of the small rectangles, and then cut the ears off of the template and then trace out this new rectangular cut. Cut out all of your trace pieces from the faux leather. Next use a thin brush or toothpick, I mean, use what you have, right? To put edge coat on the long ends of the small rectangles and on the one smaller side of the big rectangle where you cut off the ears. You guys asked us to use this product on our next faux leather project and you're right, we love it. It makes the edges look super clean and nicely finished. Took my two ear pieces and added some fabric glue and then stuck them together with the wrong sides together. And then I'm gonna take my remaining large rectangular piece and put that on top with the wrong side facing in. So you can see this is coming together, but for the next step, don't do what I did where I just like went into sewing everything together. Oh. You're actually gonna to wanna to take your D rings and your little strips of rectangular fabric wrap them around the D-ring and then slide them in between your two ear pieces so that when you go around and sew everything up, it's all together. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this to the sewing machine, make sure everything's lined up nicely, and then go around with your black thread and go all the way around the edges, even around the curves of the ears. Just go slow and steady and you'll have that nice curve. All while making sure that your D-ring fabric is in between the layers so that it's also getting sewn into place. So once everything's sewn up, you're gonna have a little bit of an edge around the entire thing. Then we're gonna come along with some scissors and cut as close to the seam as we can. It's gonna give us a nice finish. And uh, just make sure that you don't cut off your D-ring fabric loops. You kind of have to go around the fabric around the D-ring. Just be cautious of that. Don't cut off your D-ring as you're cutting off all the extra fabric around the seam. Hem seam. Hem seam, come for me, sewers. And then we're gonna black out all of the remaining raw edges with some more of that edge coat. For the bag shop, we're taking that thrifted belt and we're cutting off any of the buckles on the ends. And then we're going to add some fabric glue to the ends and wrap it around the D-ring and just use a binder clip to hold that into place. I'm doing that on both sides and when your glue has dried, it usually doesn't take more than 30 minutes if you're being really generous. 15 if your glue's good and fast drying. You can take off your binder clips and your bag is done. 
You can wear this as like a side satchel purse. You could also do it in a way where maybe you don't cut off the belt buckle and you could like wear it as a belt and fanny pack. So cute, I've seen a lot of people wearing these foam wallets on their belts. Super cute, rep that Disney pride. All right, so next we're gonna be making some DIY floral Mickey ears. So you'll need a headband and also a floral foam circle, but the kind that won't crumble when you touch it. So since the circle is actually pretty wide, I'm going to cut it in half with an X-Acto knife. This will make it thinner so we can use it for both ears and also so it won't be as much room to cover. So then you wanna stretch out the headband slightly so that it'll be as big as your head. And then you wanna trace that out onto the floral foam circle. And I just used a marker for that. So then you wanna cut out the curve that we just drew. I just used an X-Acto knife for this and obviously do it to both circles. And then you're gonna need some faux flowers. We have some white ones and red ones here. And you're gonna take the flowers off of the stems. You can either use wire cutters or you can just pull them off, which I discovered the wow. hard way. I just, I tried to cut them off with wire cutters and it was not working. Hard one. She's thick. And um, Kelsey over here was just like, oh, why don't you try this? I was like, okay, you learn something every day. So you can pull them off guys, take the easy road. So now you'll have your flowers. So for the flowers that lay flat, you can actually just poke it into the foam and add a little bit of hot glue to that. But for the ones that kind of are taller, you can lay them on its side and glue the petals down to the foam. So before I glued anything down, I just kind of laid the flowers onto the foam to make sure I liked the design. And once I did that, I was ready to glue it on. So initially, I was putting the glue onto the flower and then gluing it onto the foam. Just like extra, you can cut. You okay? Big mistake! I burned myself like five times. So in order to not burn yourself, you can actually put the glue onto the foam and then put your flower on. That will avoid all hazards, hopefully. If you're clumsy like me, it maybe will still happen, but it'll reduce the chances. So that's a tip for you. Don't burn yourself. So I filled up the front with white flowers. It looks so cute so far. And then we had the genius idea to do a kind of like double-sided Mickey ears situation since we had the red flowers, but we didn't know what to do with them. So we just glued all of the red flowers onto the backside and most of them laid pretty flat. So we just added a little bit of hot glue to the foam and then stuck it on. And you can poke it in a little bit if it has a little bit of that stem and that'll just make it stay in better. And for the sides of the ears, we just used some leftover petals that we pulled off of the flowers and just glued that straight down to the sides and that just covered any of the green that was showing through. So after we glued all the flowers on, they are ready to be put onto the headband. So for this part, you're gonna just stretch out the headband a little bit to see if it fits, and then add some glue to the inside curve of the ear. Add a lot of glue. This step is very important so that it doesn't fall off when you're on your rides and whatnot at Disneyland. So we actually made a whole mound of glue. Just glue all over the inside of the headband as well just to make sure that it sticks down. Obviously you want to do this to both sides, both ears, and wait for it to dry. And once you're finished with that, you're finished with your floral Mickey ears. Okay, so next up we're gonna show you how to make this honestly so cool Disney inspired tea. So a lot of Disney merch you can find honestly like probably isn't my aesthetic, but I'm such a hardcore Disney fan that I wanted to make something that I would love to wear and still get to rep my Disney style. So today I'm gonna show you how to make this kind of like 70s retro vibey t-shirt. So the main aspect of this DIY is going to be a design that we iron onto a t-shirt. So we have this awesome template that you can access on our website or you can definitely feel free to make your own design and use the techniques that I'll show you how to do later. 
Okay, so if you're going to use our template, I'm going to show you how to use it. So once you've downloaded the template, you can open any of our suggested color schemes, or you can definitely switch out the colors later once it's open. So you start off by noticing that all of the words are actually backwards. Make sure to leave them this way since they need to be ironed on backwards. Add in any of your favorite Disney characters, this can be movies, or it can even be Disney themed foods if you want. Once you're happy with your design, now it's time to put it on a shirt. So to do this, you will need some printable t-shirt transfer paper. We will link some below for you. Now it's time to print out your design onto this paper. So next up, it's time to cut out your design. I suggest that you try and cut as close to your words as possible here, because even though the white is gonna iron on clear, it's still gonna make the t-shirt a little stiff wherever it is. So try and eliminate any of the white space if you can. So you could definitely cut out each letter individually, but that honestly will take a lot of time. So I found that just cutting out the single lines, including the and sign, to work just as well. Place a towel down onto a table to avoid damage to your surface, and then place your t-shirt on top. We thrifted this nice white one. Place your words onto the shirt with the text side down. The key here is to try and place them onto your shirt in a similar way that they were on that Photoshop file, so keeping them less justified with like a little bit of space between each word. So next it's time to turn your iron on. We suggest going with the temperature that the directions of your transfer paper recommends. I actually found that adding a thin piece of fabric or like another t-shirt on top of your paper when you're doing your first pass of the iron, really helps to not have your words shift around when you're ironing it because that's the last thing we want, is to have our beautiful words kind of be off-centered. Go from left to right and top to bottom in nice, smooth motions, about 15 to 30 seconds, but again, defer to the directions that came with your paper because they can all be a little bit different. Once you've done your first pass and the words are sticking a little bit, you can remove that shirt or fabric to make sure your iron is directly on the paper and it's adhering really well. Once they're fully ironed on, let them sit and cool completely before peeling off the back. I know it's tempting, but this could ruin it. So let it sit for about two minutes until it's not hot to touch at all. Cool tip. Cool tip. <laughs> Once it's completely cool, then you can go ahead and peel off that oh so satisfying back and see your brand new Disney tee. I would love to see how you guys customize this template and what movies you love, what characters you love, what color schemes you love. So if you end up recreating this tea, send it to us on Instagram using hashtag Sora Girl Squad because I love this so much. Maybe even thinking about it for like Sora Girls merch, I don't know. Let us know below because ah, I love this one. DIYs, I love them. They're so simple, so easy. And um, yeah, go get yourself that template. Yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> there's a template for your bag too. Oh my god, I'll link below. What a template video. Also, let us know in the comments below which like lists you would do. Yes. Oh yeah. I'm so interested. Yeah, I love those shirts that turned out so cute. Yeah, let's go. And make sure to check out the video that we did on Denver's channel. Yeah. Make sure to subscribe to the Sorry Girls if you are coming from my channel because they're awesome and I love them. Thank you. And while you're over at Jennifer's channel, give her a subscribe as well. <laughs> the theme of the day. <laughs> subscribe. Subscribe everyone. And <gasps> oh my god, subscribe, that Disney channel. Can oh. I draw the subscribe button? The plate or whatever? Didin, didin, Gets copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. It is insight time and I'm so excited to shout out Natalie and her porch balcony patio. It is friggin' goals. I love it. I love patio season. And we have a couple patio DIYs on our channel, so if you guys haven't seen those, make sure that you check them out. We'll link them around here. And use hashtag Squad if you want to be featured in this Ensleep.